I believe we all have this thing inside of us that's trying to come out. It's the good stuff inside of us we all have, but fail to recognize sometimes. It's the thing inside each of us that wants to be good. Good at what we do, achieve our goals, help others, become the best version of ourselves. It's like, as soon as we're born, this thing comes in and like tries to destroy that. I feel like it's determined to steal our joy, get us wasting our time on everything and anything but what we're actually meant to be doing here in this life. My name is Aerith Old. Oh, that's kind of weird saying your own name. <laughs> Aerith Old. Old. My name was, is my dad's middle name, my grandfather's middle name. My great granddad named my grandfather after his two best, best friends. He was in World War I. And I named my grandfather Ralph Aerith. Just in tribute to my great grandfather's best friend. And that's how it kind of got into our family. Uh, I grew up in a little town called Hueytown, it's on the outskirts of Birmingham, Alabama. It's a little blue collar town. It's best known for NASCAR drivers like uh, Neil Bonnet, Bobby Allison, big time Davey Allison, and uh, the Alabama game. Everybody knows about the Alabama game. My dad played guitar, and both my grandmothers played piano, and my dad's dad was a harp player, played harmonica, and my mom played piano and was a singer, so I, I've just always been in music. My first memories would be watching my dad play guitar in the living room and or seeing him practice or rehearse with some of his buddies. And I just always thought it was the coolest thing. I was kind of hooked from it. My first guitar uh, came out of, I was, 10 years old, I was in fifth grade. Miss Ruby, my fifth grade teacher, one of the most influential people early on in my life. My dad kind of gave me some incentive, made a deal with me. If I made A's and B's on my next report card, he would buy me my own guitar instead of using his guitars because his guitars were old and they were expensive and to me, they didn't look cool. I wanted a shiny electric guitar. I wanted a Fender Stratocaster, you know? But uh, I knew I wasn't gonna get that because my dad never bought me anything that I thought was cool. He always bought me things that he thought I would get the most out of and I would grow from it. So I go to my teacher, Miss Ruby, and I'm like, hey, I, I made this deal with my dad and if I make A's and B's on my next report card, he's gonna get me a guitar. So she did everything she could to help me get this guitar. And uh, when I got this guitar, I'd already known, learned the songs, uh, Achy Breaky Heart by Billy Ray Cyrus and Bad Moon Rising by <laughs> CCR. I don't even remember that performance, but I know I performed pieces of those songs at Show and Tell. Miss Ruby, I guess, I really didn't think about it after after that, you know, until I got a little bit older, you know, after graduation, graduating high school. But I started staying in touch with her through like Facebook and stuff. But uh, she has since passed away. I know she, she was fighting cancer for a while, but I loved her, man. She was she was freaking awesome. Four a.m. going. Well, Sean and I, my brother, we, we, music, even though he loved it and it was a passion of his, it wasn't like his number one passion. And he wouldn't really find that out till later on in life. Okay. 
So, after a couple years after high school, I moved to Atlanta. Soon after, Sean followed, and we started this band called Love Rush. A few years later, after we were doing pretty well, our dad got sick. He got cancer, and uh, we didn't really know what that meant at first. We were like, oh, okay, so, you know, he could die or he's going to survive, and that's our dad, he's going to survive. No, I mean, there's no way he's not going to survive. 2009, he, he passed away. The, the stress from our dad being sick and us knowing that this could really turn into him like dying put a lot of stress on my brother and I and the rest of my siblings. Everybody handles, you know, grief in a different way and my brother moved and I uh, kind of stuck around trying to figure out what I was supposed to be doing after he died. And, uh, and then I met my wife, my ex-wife. Hey, y'all, where are we going tonight? 2015, I released a song called Hey, Y'all, and it was the start of me releasing original music again. At the time of releasing all that, uh, I was on the road, and uh, my wife at the time, she, she said she, she, she was leaving. She, she wouldn't be home when I got home. And for like three months, I binged. And then there was like this weekend, three, four day weekend where I binged and had an overdose of some sort. And uh, that, was, that was the last time I would ever drink again. A lot of people go through the same things. And I'd have to say, in the midst of getting sober, I realized that other people existed in this world other than myself. About three or four months into being sober, I decided I wanted to go into the studio and record some songs or record an album Moving to Nashville seemed like the next right thing to do. My initial plan moving to Nashville was to put together a band and hit the road. I think it's, it's, it's taken so long to release this album because of everything that I've had to overcome. There's two things happening during the recording of this album. I was sober. I was trying to remain sober. Uh, I was fighting for my marriage. And fighting for your marriage or for a relationship, sometimes you're not actually doing anything but waiting. The producer on, on the Sooner or Later album is a guy named Josh Bright. Josh was based out of Boaz, but doing a lot of work in Nashville. I reached out to him and I went in to his home studio in Boaz, Alabama. I had plenty of songs to do a full album. He just didn't think the other songs were as strong, so we kept it to eight songs for this album, and I thought it was smart. Later on in the process, I started struggling with uh, like some vocal issues that I was going through, mainly because I think a lot, I'm in my head all the time. Uh, it's very hard for me to be in the moment, something I struggle with, but uh, especially being sober now. <laughs> I went and did some of the vocals with a guy named Eric Waters. He's a producer based out of Birmingham, and 
he has a little studio. I've always looked up to him, so he helped get the best vocal performance out of me on some of these songs. Well, really all the songs, but later on some of the songs we realized needed to be the original first take. Uh, so yeah, I, w I went through a huge process with that. Battling this thing inside of me, like, I don't like my voice. Who am I as a singer? Who, who am I without my brother? Who am I just Aerith? Didn't really know how to just be me. It's okay to push yourself, and I push myself hard. But sometimes the first take is the best take. The past four or five years, working on this album, going through all those things, uh, remaining sober, in order for me to remain sober, I had to put my higher power first, God. It's allowed me to figure out who and what I am. Why'd you name the album Sooner or Later? Well, because sooner or later I was going to finish it. No. So, uh, sooner or later, if you hang in there, whatever you're going through and you don't give up, sooner or later, you're going to figure it out. There's going to be hope. There's hope. There's a, on the other side. That, like, everything that we go through is temporary. We go through all these emotional battles in life, and there's, it's just temporary. Like, wait. Sooner or later, whatever it is you're trying to figure out, if you just don't give up, hold on. You get to the other side of that, and you're going to figure it out. Out the job of the suitcase and the journey. 